Hello friends and fellow mutants, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia and it's time for another Marvel United Deep Dive. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, give some love to the subscribe button, click the bell as well. And if you are a fan of fantasy books, maybe you've tried the Tolkien's, maybe you've skimmed through the Sanderson's, maybe you've ruffled through the Rowling's, I don't know what you've been doing, but you haven't felt the Fantasia's. But it's not too late. You can get my fantasy novels, We Were Wizards, right now on Amazon. They come in three different formats, in paperback, in hardcover, in ebook. This purple one is the first book of We Were Wizards, and the next book to read is this gray one, Ghost of Wizards Past. And you can get them both on Amazon right now. What are you waiting for? Treat yourself, treat the fantasy fan in your life to some good old-fashioned sword-slinging adventures. Here, let me read you a quick random line of dialogue. Since he was new at this sort of thing, Amethyst was the last to get ready. Oh, what's he getting ready for? What's he new at? I can't tell you. That's called a spoiler by the books. I promise you shan't be disappointed. Also, the word shan't might be in the book somewhere. It's been a minute. All right, we here at Digital Charcuterie have signed a sworn contract to uphold this Marvel United Deep Dive series. But today, for the first time in the series history, we are signing that contract with an X. Because we have just zipped our way past season one already and into the much bigger, much brighter, and even more delightful season two. You can't have a United game without a core box. It's just not possible. Believe me, I've tried. So, we gotta begin at the beginning with the Marvel United X-Men core box. Let's hit the table, let's open it up, and let's take a look at what you get inside. I think I speak for everybody when I say, Welcome to the X-Men, everybody. Season two of Marvel United officially kicks off right now. And what I love so much about this season is season one was very Marvel Cinematic Universe centric in its ways and in the way all the characters looked, and that's fine with me. But there's one Marvel aesthetic that I love more than the Cinematic Universe aesthetic, and that's the aesthetic of the crisp, colorful, 1990s cartoon universe. That, to me, is as pure Marvel as Marvel gets. The yellows are the brightest yellows, the blues are the most striking vivid blues, the reds are deep as the pits of hell itself in the most wonderful possible way. I love every bit of the way those cartoons looked, and the fact that that is exactly what was represented here in all of season two, ugh, it's... I, I could not be happier. So here is the X-Men core box. Everything you need to get started to play is right back there. Let's read this really quickly. In the battle for mutant acceptance, the Brotherhood of Mutants sees themselves as superior to ordinary people, hatching villainous plans to bend mankind to their will. But the X-Men uphold the principle that mutants and humans should live as equals and rise to meet every challenge. They'll travel the world in a desperate struggle to protect the innocent, face down dire threats, and confront these villains once and for all. As the fate of mankind hangs in the balance, the X-Men will stand united. Wonderful! I love it! And as you can see, it finally gives us purple anti-hero characters, which is one of the best additions I think Season 2 has added. It really changed the game, no pun intended, when it comes to Marvel United. It really took it from very good to damn near perfect in my opinion anyway. So let's remove this little stuff here. As we open it up, we'll see we have a full instruction book because this is a core box after all, and full instructions are kind of important. And what you get in here is, oh, you got a free achievements checklist with that um, QR code. That's what that's called. I forgot the name of those things for a second. And you have your lovely full color instruction manual spelling out all the different rules, uh, as well as introducing the new stuff like anti-heroes and telling you what all the tokens mean, and supervillain mode, which is brand new. They never had it before. Xavier solo mode, which is a different take on the solo mode they had before, but it's still not the way I like to play. I play three-handed solo. 
uh, clocking in at 15 wonderful pages, actually 16 pages of rules. All good stuff. All right, we will lift this and get that out of the way for you so we can peek at the wonders within, uh, starting with our locations. It's a core box, so we're getting eight of them. And they are the Sentinel Space Station, the Weapon X facility. Ooh, bad stuff happens there. Genosha, Muir Island, the Mutant Research Center. That's where Moira McTaggart's from. The X-Jet, the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning. Asteroid M, which might have my favorite end of turn effect ever. Very, very handy. And the Hangar Bay. So you get the X-Jet and the Hangar Bay. Two for the price of one. Would you prefer yellow spandex? I would. This guy would. All right, there's our eight locations. And underneath that, we've got our four villain dashboards for the four villains that come in this box, as well as this uh, mission board, which comes in there with it. Uh, you have Magneto. You have Mystique. Sabretooth. And my favorite X-Men villain, Juggernaut. Ah, so much fun. There they are. Beautiful, new, classic villains to take on. And the most colorful 90s version of them to boot. And let's see how complicated some of them are. Uh, he has a special setup. She has a special setup. So Juggernaut's the simplest of the four. Even though he's arguably the hardest of the four. Uh, in the middle well, you will get your three mission cards. As usual for a core box. Uh, you're also going to have your tokens. Your civilians and thugs are in here. I also keep this little tiny token bag. Uh, there's a Senator Kelly token in there. There's some of the other smaller things as well as the hunted token and uh, the threat tokens. I keep other stuff that's mixed in from other villains uh, just, you know, for convenience sake. And then all the other tokens are in there. You'll get most of those tokens in this box, not all. You can look back and check inside the instruction manual if you want to know exactly what tokens you're going to get in here. But these big ones you see do not come in this box. All right, heroes first. Oh, sorry, I failed to mention my favorite tracker cube in all of Marvel United because it's chrome, like the X-Men logo itself. -na 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 -na. I love it. I love the tracker cubes. Okay, let's go back now and take a look. Oh, first of all, I have the... Um, Crisis tokens, that's what they're called in here. I'll just slip that out of the way. And now we'll take a look at the hero decks. Ooh, there's a lot. Starting with Jean Grey, I'm so happy that these are the classic 90s looks that I remember. Jean Grey, there's her deck right there. Uh, wonderful, wonderful costume for Jean Grey. And there's Mystique's hero deck with great art for Mystique. And that's followed by Cyclops, classic Cyclops. I'm sorry, but if I can't see Cyclops' hair, I don't like the costume. Mm -mm, not for me. This is the only Cyclops costume that I will write home about. The other ones I'll still write home about, but they'll be angry letters full of disappointment. Here is Beast, my favorite X-Man. Whoa, see, he's, I'm so excited to see Beast that I, my fingers stopped working. And his little picture is just an upside down face of his because he's usually hanging upside down from the ceiling like there that's usually how he hangs out he relaxes like that like a bat so cool i'm gonna put these down as we move on to storm there is storm power of lightning strike my foes she's so fun so dramatic i love how dramatic storm is there is her deck full of fun stuff very powerful mutant magneto is next he does not play well with others but man, is he ever powerful. His villain deck is fun. I wish it was not gray. I wish it was red and purple. But they rectified that in season three with the other Magneto that you get there. Here's Professor X with a beautiful colored deck. And once again, they got the classic 90s Professor X that I love so much with his yellow hover chair. And he's using Cerebro. And there is Wolverine, the blue and yellow Wolverine because it's the most colorful one, and I love it so much. There he is. Sweet. And on the other side, you will find the four villains that you will get in this box. Starting from the back here, the unstoppable Chuggernaut, who really is almost unstoppable. One of the hardest villains in all of Marvel United. 
In fact, I would posit that this box contains per capita some of the hardest villains. Magneto himself is actually fairly okay. He's not too hard and not too easy, but Mystique, Sabretooth, and especially Juggernaut, man, they are relentless. In fact, I don't think I have ever beaten Sabretooth. Uh, speak of the devil. He is tough, man. He just hunts you down. It's so hard to escape him. Like, he goes right to the hunted hero so many times. Look at that. Go to the hunted hero. Go to the hunted hero. I, if there's a strategy to beat Sabretooth, I am not privy to that strategy. Mystique is next. Very, very difficult villain, too. Because if she lays a finger on Senator Kelly, or if any of her henchmen lay a finger on Senator Kelly, that's it. Game over, man. Game over. And then Magneto is more straightforward. He's probably the one I would recommend using first if you get this box. He comes with a used Cerebro card, which you have to replace with the Rescue Civilians mission. They cancel each other out. So you don't rescue civilians when Magneto's around. You've got to use Cerebro instead. But he's throwing henchmen at you as well. And he is just so powerful and fun because he's Magneto, one of the greatest villains ever made. Uh, there we have it. That is your villain decks. So let's take a look at these characters, starting with my least favorite miniature in here, which is probably Sabretooth. And I'm not saying that because I'm biased that he keeps beating my ass every time I play against him. He really is just my least favorite miniature in here for no reason, just because the other ones are better. There's nothing wrong with him at all. But there's Sabretooth and he looks like classic big furry blonde Sabretooth. I'm looking at you, X-Men Origins Wolverine who somehow made the baffling choice to make him not furry and not even blonde. But I digress. This is Sabretooth, and he looks great, and he's standing on a log because he's always out in the wild, hunting in the forest. I think we will go for Beast, who's my favorite X-Man. Uh, they just got a great Beast in here, and he's adequately blue. Wonderful Beast. I wonder if they toyed with the idea of having him hang upside down but thought better of it. Uh, that would be interesting, because it would be a very difficult miniature to pull off. And coming up next is Mystique. So here we have our first anti-hero. As you notice, she has a villain deck and a hero deck. Seasons 2 and 3 give us anti-heroes plenty, and they are so much fun. I mean, when new Marvel United sets get announced and new characters trickle in, Getting a hero is exciting. Getting a villain is more exciting. Getting an anti-hero? That's like getting ice cream and pizza on the same day. There's, there's, there's nothing else like it. Uh, and she's got skulls on her, because that's how Mystique rolls. I love this. I love this little swirl of the, the white thing that she wears, <laughs> which is kind of hard to quantify. I don't know exactly what to call that thing. But there she is, mean and nasty. And I think half of her face... No, half of her face is not morphing. But I've seen people paint it where it looks like it is, which is very cool. And after her, we're going to take a peek at Cyclops. This is just a good old classic look of Cyclops standing on that piece of rubble, leading his team. X-Men, behind me! Right? Everybody thinks he's boring, but I like Cyclops a lot. And this look is Cyclops to me. There's no, no excuse to have him not look like this. Ugh, I can't stand when they give him that thing where it just wraps over his head and you don't see his hair. Like, no. Nah. Sorry, but no, that's not Cyclops. I think Professor X's miniature is next. They got the hover chair uh, as good as you can get it until they developed the technology to actually have hovering miniatures. But isn't that great? They got him exactly how he should be. He's just getting ready to enter somebody's mind and come to a peaceful resolution. Wolverine. Wolverine is just jumping into the action. He's got his pointy things on his head. Man, was it ever fantastic finally getting to see Hugh Jackman put this suit on. That was a special moment. They even made his arms a little bit hairy because Wolverine is a swarthy gentleman and his claws are great. They're adequately soft so that they don't snap. But even if they did snap, he could take it. He can take anything. He's Wolverine. Uh, I'm going to get Storm next. Storm looks beautiful with her cape. And that cape is attached to her in an interesting way. It's a very cool cape. It's unique. It's not all solid, right? It's got the holes in it because she glides through the air on it. And man, she's got a storm cloud underneath her. That is awesome. 
the secondary leader of the X-Men when uh, it's usually her or Cyclops who takes charge. And she looks adequately like a leader here. Awesome stuff. Classic Storm. And then over here, we're going to go to Juggernaut next, who the red they chose for the color of the minis is perfect because it's the exact slightly muted shade of red that Juggernaut is. He's like a reddish brown, and so this suits him very well. Uh, when I get Witching Hour, if it ever becomes available for me, it's going to come with a blue Juggernaut, and that's going to be uh, a, a learning curve because the thought of Juggernaut wearing blue freaks me out, man. But we still have this beautiful, perfect Juggernaut. Oh, I love this so much. I want classic Juggernaut to appear in the MCU so badly. In Deadpool 2, they were almost perfect with how they made him look. Now we just need him in the red instead of that yellow prison uniform he wore. Come on, make it happen. And last but not least, my favorite mini in the box, and I think others would agree with me, Magneto. We are the future, Charles, not them. They no longer matter. I love this man. Look at that. Look at all the girders popping up around him. He's got, uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but he's got little rivets floating everywhere, like little pieces of metal, as if he's making all the metal around him float. Um, let's see. I think, yeah, you can see it back here. See, there's like little nuts and bolts flying all around him. Yeah, and behind him. It's just all swirling around his cape. And it's purple, which suits him. It's He suits having purple. Man, is that ever cool. That's that's a miniature right there. That's the best one in the box. Hands down. Or in his case, hands up. Oh, and I almost forgot. Uh, these were taken out, but the superhero and supervillain cards come in here as well. So these are decks of cards that you will get where you can play supervillain mode, which allows you to have a player actually play as the villain. And I will admit, I know nothing about how this works because I have never done it before. But essentially, you use this as your guide. So when you're playing supervillain mode, the heroes start with these tokens to make it a little easier on them so it's not one-sided because otherwise the villain would have a big advantage. And they got these cards as well, so the villain can play this. It says he plays a master plan card that should add any of these. He adds those, splitting them as he wishes instead. Or the hero has one where she can play it where as soon as overflow is triggered in her location, she can play this and cancel the overflow. So it's just like these cool little cards. Uh, you play almost like an instant in Magic the Gathering that kind of uh, fools around with the rules a bit. And they look like that. They're adequately colored very, very nice. I do not keep these in the box because the box is already stuffed full. I actually keep these off to the side because I have never used them before, but they're there. They're ready to be used whenever I see fit. So now as we put stuff away, we're going to add things. And as usual here on the Marvel United Deep Dive, we are going to add things that do not come in this box, but that I put in here for organization's sake and just to keep everything kind of where it belongs or where I feel it belongs. So we are adding two more villain decks because this well, as you saw, had the room for it. We are adding from the mutant promo box, the Brotherhood of Mutants and Dark Phoenix. So their miniatures are still in the mutant promo box where they belong and you will see them when we get to that. But Dark Phoenix, I figure she belongs in here because she's such a classic X-Men villain and she's Jean Grey, so there you go. And these guys are as classic as they come when it comes to X-Men villains. Blob, Pyro, and Toad. So the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants goes in here as well, just like that. They're, they're so classic. So is everybody in this box. And I'll now take their dashboards, which look like that, and place them just underneath everybody else's. And that goes there like so. And we are now done looking at the second, and depending on who you ask, greatest core box in Marvel United. Now, how many points is this box worth? Is that a core box or is that a core box? Like, wow. Okay, now it's time to assign points of worthiness and see just how much this box is worth. Does it give you substantial bang for your buck? In this guy's opinion, heck yes. And I didn't even mean to do that. I'm sorry. Stop, stop doing things, computer. Let's take a look. 
Since we are starting a brand new season, I thought it would be prudent if I just give you a quick refresher on what everything is worth in our points ranking system. So, any hero is worth one points just for existing, because heroes are great. Villains, however, make the game more exciting, so they're worth two points. And anti-heroes are the best of both worlds, plus they're purple, which is the greatest color ever, so they are worth three points. Every mini that comes in a box, every miniature, is worth one point, unless... It's a special miniature, and special miniatures could mean oversized, or they could mean that they come with cool translucent plastic effects. Those are worth two points instead of one. Every location is worth half a point. That's just how it ended up being. A location is cool, but, you know, they're kind of a dime a dozen. So, 0 0.5 points. A challenge such as the Endangered Locations Challenge in Black Panther or the Secret Identity Challenge in Spider-Verse, those are worth one point. An entirely new game mode is worth two. Those count for things like Shield Solo Mode or Sinister Six Mode. It's a big change to the United System. It's worth two points. And finally, if there's any equipment cards at all, those are worth one point. All right, now that we know that, let's get started. This beautiful X-Men core box comes with 10 minis, like any core box would, which gives it 10 points. Six of those minis are heroes, giving us another six points. Two of them are villains, which adds up to four points. Two of them are anti-heroes, and those two purple friends are worth six points total. Then you've got eight locations, which totals out to four points. All of the delightful core box essentials that you need to play the game, your crisis tokens, your mission cards, all that stuff is worth one point because you got to have those. Then there's Xavier Solo Mode, which is worth two points because it is a brand new way to play the game. But then they went above and beyond and gave us another brand new way to play the game with Super Villain Mode. And that's worth two points as well. All of that comes out to a crisp, clean 35 points, putting it five whole points above the original core box. So it's already worth quite a lot more than the base set for season one. All right, there you have it. That was our deep dive of the X-Men United core box. And man, what a core box. To this day, probably still my favorite one, just in terms of all the goodies you get inside. I love them all, but man, that X-Men one is just delightful from start to finish. Next week, put on your mortar boards, but also get ready to throw off your mortar boards because we are stepping back in time to 1960s academia, the mutant way, with X-Men First Class. So we'll see you then next week for another Marvel United Deep Dive here on Digital Charcuterie as we continue to make the wait for DC Superheroes United a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. P.S. Witching Hour, please come out soon. See you next time.